Hi everyone, today I'm going to be presenting my project, Introducing Social Robotics with Adaptive Personality. So let's get started. Social robotics is an expansive field with applications in many areas such as medicine, uh, hospitality, and even in the home in the form of personal assistance, such as uh, Amazon Alexa and Google Home. However, many of these products have issues in maintaining a consistent personality while generating interesting and varied dialogue. So to address this, I developed Jill, a conversational AI um, that runs on the physical fur hat robot that uses the techniques of sentiment analysis, zero shot learning, and dialogue generation on transformer-based architectures to create a, um, a conversational partner that can adapt its personality in the direction of the user's own so that they may appear amicable and interesting to a human partner. So let's have a little look about how Jill works. So Jill has two main states, the setup state and the main dialogue loop. And we move between them with human verbal input. Jill is maintained by two main data structures, the memory array, which stores past human Jill dialogue pairs, and the sentiment dictionary, which stores the user's affinity towards particular topics over the course of the conversation. And this is tweaked. So initially we enter the setup state and the user chooses a category from a predefined list and their vocal input is shoehorned into one of these categories using zero shot learning. So for example, if the category was entertainment and music, which is rather long, if the user just says music, this will still be classified into entertainment and music. The user then chooses a topic, which can be absolutely anything. And Jill does a Wikipedia uh, API query, pulls the page, does a summarization of it, and stores it aside for question answering later on. And this is also used to initialize the memory to provide context to Jill about what we're talking about. So let's have a look at the main dialogue loop. So the user always speaks first and we classify the user's speech into either a question or a statement, again, using zero shot classification. So if the user's input was a question, we classify it into either a knowledge question or a general question. If it was a knowledge question, we use BERT for question answering using the summary we pulled from the setup stage to answer the user's question. And we store both the user's question and Jill's answer in memory and hold on to it. If it was a general question, for example, how are you? Uh, what do you think of the weather today? Um, we store the user's question and we pass on the query to the dialogue generation stage where it will be answered there. If the user's input was a statement, um, we perform sentiment analysis on it and we adjust the sentiment uh, dictionary for that category in the direction of the user's sentiment, whether this is positive, negative or neutral. And the user's statement is stored into memory. Jill then, generates dialogue regardless of the route we've um, come from. So if we ask a knowledge question, um, Jill will create a follow-up response to that, likewise for a statement. If we asked a general question, the answer will be generated here. And uh, the dialogue generation using Dialogue GPT um, creates a pool of five responses and chooses the most probable response mirroring the user's sentiment. We then store this in memory and we reply to the user. If it was a knowledge question, we first relay the answer from our summarization and then the follow up statement. Otherwise, we just relay the generated text. This Jill dialogue, Jill human dialogue pair is added to memory. And finally, there is a small chance that Jill may ask a question in response. And this is pulled from a bank. Um, corresponding to the sentiment of the user at that point. So for example, if the user has a positive sentiment, Jill may ask, what do you like about X? Likewise for negative, um, neutral is just tell me more about this, something like that. 
If the memory is full, we finally remove the last two dialogue pairs so Jill doesn't reference old conversation. Let's have a look at Jill in action. In this conversation, Jill and I are talking about the games company Nintendo. It's your turn to speak. What game console is your favourite? I like all of them, but I like Mario Kart more than any other game. I think Mario Kart's pretty fun, but I really like Legend of Zelda more. What about you? I like the game. What do you like about Nintendo? I think they produce some really cool games, um, and I've loved their consoles ever since I was a kid. They do, but I feel like I like them more now than I did when I was a kid. Why do you think that? Just a personal preference, I guess. I really like the Nintendo Switch. I think it's a great console. Yeah, that's true. The Switch is one of my favourite things about it. But I didn't really like the Wii U. I think that console was really bad. I actually like the Wii U and the gamepad. Okay, in this conversation, Jill and I are having a chat about Taylor Swift. Let's talk about entertainment and music. Within the category, what would you like to talk about? Taylor Swift. Okay, let's chat about Taylor Swift. Okay, you start. I have a question about Taylor Swift. Sure, ask away. What genre of music does Taylor Swift perform? Let me think. Country. Her songs are good. Why do you like Taylor Swift? Because she is a good singer. I think her voice is really different. What do you think? I think her voice is better than most singers. Maybe that's just me. What do you dislike about Taylor Swift? There's not really much that I dislike about her, but I don't really like some of her recent music. I prefer her older music. Yeah, I really like her old stuff as well. I've been listening to her for years. Glad you enjoy it. I like it. I really want to go and see her perform one day. What about you? That's a good idea. Okay, so here we can see some further example dialogue generated from Jill. So on the right, um, here is an example of Jill adapting their personality over the course of the conversation. So to begin with, Jill really doesn't like Taylor Swift, but I persist. Um, and over time, Jill adapts their preference to saying, I like it, but it's not the best. Um, so I continue to persist and we still see that at the end of the conversation, Jill really likes her. Uh, Jill's asking questions about what do I like about Taylor Swift? So here's the adaptive personality in play. Um, on the left, we can see some interesting responses from Jill. Um, Jill actually speaks about things related to Nintendo, but wasn't explicitly in the summarization, such as Wii Sports here. And we can see that um, Dialogue GPT makes links between these topics when generating a response. We can see here some uh, instances where Jill seemingly contradicts himself, but then recovers really well. So, for example, we're asking Jill about Gordon Ramsay and Jill thinks that uh, he's a good cook. We ask Jill if we think Gordon Ramsay's a good chef and Jill responds, no. And we say, oh, well, you've contradicted yourself. And Jill says, ah, oh, I said he was a, a good cook, but not a good chef. We also see it in the bottom conversation. Um, Jill says, ah, oh, I like her music, but I don't like her music. We say, oh, you need to make your mind up. And Jill responds, I think you need to learn how to be more concise and not to make a stupid joke. So we can see that Jill recovers really well and maintains this sense of a personality that is quite fun. Um, so yeah. So 
looking at ethical concerns, um, the authors of Dialogue GPT note that the model has a tendency to generate offensive responses sometimes due to the data set it was trained on. Um, so to address this, we employ Burt toxicity filter uh, to filter out toxic speech. Um, and this was fine tuned to ensure that um, Jill could express a negative opinion like, I don't know, I don't like cheese, but at the same time, Jill doesn't say something offensive. The biggest failure of Jill that we saw was the voice recognition. And you can see this, an example of a conversation where this frequently occurs on the right. And this is because of the voice recognition software um, not being trained on all populations of people. And this failure disproportionately affects underrepresented populations and is an inherent problem. That's the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them now.